Uh, thank you, and thank you for your enthusiasm. Now, uh, do I understand that I'm the only thing standing in the way between election, you and election results? Is that right? Okay. So we got some candidates here that are kind of nervous. Well, you know, but, but I was in Boy State in 1968. By this time, I was, uh, I was over being nervous. I, I came to Boy State in 1968 and ran for governor. Um, I didn't get in the runoff for the, uh, for the primary nomination. Uh, and uh, I ended up, though, being a senator at Boy State. It stood me in good stead. I got to be a senator at the state level, and now I'm a senator at the United States Senate level. So uh, you never know what, uh, what the future will hold for you. Now let me uh, let me mention we're going to do audience participation. I think that's what I've seen a lot of. So is that okay? You want to talk back and forth? Okay. Uh, um, and I, I do want to ask you to be thinking about this. Now, is there, a, uh, Mr. Guyton, is there a talent night later on? Okay. Have you noticed any talent at all yet among your Boy State delegates? Is there any talent at all? Just some. Okay. Well, we might. We might want a volunteer or two or three or four or five to come up and uh, maybe with a little uh, vocal talent later on. Is that okay? So and we don't want you, know, we don't you to charge the podium or anything like that. But uh, if, if there's some folks that you think might be able to carry a tune, we may, uh, we may end my little segment with a song. Is that okay? Good. Now, um, thank you for making the decision to probably forego a Memorial Day trip to the lake or the beach or someplace with your family and, and come on to Boy State. There, there's so many demands on, on your time these days. Uh, and I don't recall having to give up Memorial Day to, to be a Boy State delegate, but you did. So you, I mean, you, you had a good Memorial Day. It was here. And I noticed there was a little something in your paper about that. Uh, but let me say this. You will learn a lot this week. Uh, I hope you learn a lot about the American Legion, and I hope you learn about all the good that they do. I'm a member of the American Legion. My dad is a member of the American Legion. As a matter of fact, he joined the American Legion the day he got home to Mississippi from World War II. He was talking to his, he was talking to his dad, glad to have him home, and his dad said, look, you know, I'm in the American Legion Let's go over to New Albany and join you up. So he signed the day he got back from the war. Um, so I hope you learned a little something about government, about how special this country is. And that's really what I want to talk about today. But also, um, two years from now, you'll be at college somewhere. And somebody will walk up to you and say, didn't I meet you at Boy State? And you'll say, yes, I was in the city of Wicker or whatever. Uh, uh, <laughs> You know, when you're, when you're running statewide, you like your hometown, but you also learn to like all, your, all the towns and all the 82 counties of Mississippi. So, uh, But, you know, 45 years from now, you don't want to think about that. But uh, I hope you're, you're all around at 45 years from now. You may be running statewide as I was and somebody – might come up to you as they do even today and say, Roger Wicker, are you the one that I was at Boy State with in 1968? So you'll, you'll learn a lot and you'll learn, uh, you'll learn a lot of people. Now, okay, here's our, here is our um, audience participation. I, I like to do dates, okay? Now, uh, Michael's got you also worked up. Can we, can we maybe have people raise their hands, okay? Uh, just important dates in history. What's significant about this? Let's try this first three rows. Somebody raise your hand. This is a really tough one. 1492. Somebody raise your hand. Okay, yes. Columbus sailed the ocean blue. It even rhymes. Uh, Columbus, you know, um, I, I'm still kind of proud of the fact that Christopher Columbus uh, discovered America in uh, 1492. It's okay with me. Um, uh, they, uh, they say there's some other claims to that. I don't know. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, next three rows. 1776. Tough one. Yes. Okay, the Declaration of Independence. Um, what, uh, okay, what city was that in, this group here? Right here. Yes. 
Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 1776, Declaration of Independence. Okay, now after we signed the Declaration of Independence, um, I don't know if you know this, things didn't go so well. I mean, I, I, there's sort of a, a misconception out there that we signed the Declaration of Independence, we got uh, free from the yoke of Great Britain, and everything was fine. Not true. George Washington lost most of his battles. Finally, he won the big one in Yorktown, and we got our independence. There's a date that we don't quite talk about as much, but anybody want to volunteer? 1783. What was seven? Yes, okay. Okay, well, 1783, um, was that? It, that's what I, what I was looking for. That ended the war, the, York, the surrender at Yorktown. But there was a particular document signed. You want to try again? That was the Treaty of Paris, 1783, and we had a lot of volunteers there. Um, took us, the, the point I want to make is this. Um, sometimes good things take time. And sometimes there's a lot of failure before you win your success. And it certainly was the way for the American Revolution. Well, I mean, we had big ideas in 1776. And we signed a document that all men are created equal and we were going to be free of the king. It took seven long, bloody years of mostly defeats and battles before Yorktown and before the Treaty of Paris in 1783. Okay, now here's another date. Um, and let's see, back here in this section, you got a whole section, 1787, 1787, okay, second row back there. The, you can stand if you'd like. Right, exactly right. Okay, the answer is the Constitution of the United States was signed in 1787. And as our delegate correctly pointed out, we were under the Articles of Confederation. Uh, up until then, we met. Where where was that back in this group? We had uh, the the Declaration of Independence was in Philadelphia. We've learned where was the Constitution Convention? Trick question. The answer is Philadelphia. Um, now, okay. Um, so so then we had a Constitution. And something else was designed in 1787. And it was, it, it is on a piece of currency we have. Now, did, did they explain to you that it, there would be a dollar, that you'd all, you'd all need to pay a dollar today? Did they explain that to you? Okay, right. No, but does it, we're not going to charge, but does anybody have a dollar bill? Do you allow them currency? Okay. Well, look, uh, you got, if you got a dollar bill in your pocket, um, take it out and look at it. You yeah, all got a dollar bill? Okay. D go along with the gag, okay? I, I will not take up a collection, okay? You got a dollar bill? Let me do a little demonstration. 1787. The same day, the same year, we came up with the Constitution, the most profound document in self and self-government and, and uh, representative government that we've ever had. We designed the great seal of the United States of America. So on the front of Dollar Bill is our first president, the, the indispensable American uh, patriot, George Washington. On the back are two circles. So if you got a dollar, you see those two circles? Okay. All right. And, well, this is a poor group. Not many dollars here, but sort of share and look, on it, look over shoulders. Okay. Now, there, there are three Latin phrases. And, and we need to kind of remember the importance of this. You see an eagle? Is, that, is anybody? Let's see. Who haven't called on? You see it uh, back here in this far section here. Do you see an, um, an eagle on that circle to the right? 
Yes, you do. Okay. Very, in the very back. Can I hear you? E pluribus unum. That's right. That's the banner sort of uh, uh, over the, uh, the eagle's head there. Now, back there in the back, you correctly pronounced it. Who wants to tell me what that means? Yes. Out of many, one. And I take it, I take it another step. Out of many, one people. And basically, that was the goal to which we aspired back in 1787 when we ratified the Constitution and when, and when uh, this country was founded, to take people of different backgrounds and make them into one people. Now, have we always done that perfectly? No, we, we haven't done that perfectly. We had to go through a civil war. We had to go through uh, the civil rights movement. We've had problems with, with ethnic uh, tensions in the great cities of the United States of America. But we do it better, I would submit to you, than any country on the face of the earth. We take a group of people, and we're one people, and we're Americans. Okay, now in the middle back here, you see the pyramid? It's got a big old eye looking out of the top of the pyramid. Who... Who wants to volunteer to, to pronounce that phrase above the pyramid? Anybody in the middle back here? Yes, sir, or front row. Okay. You know, I, I always say a new it septus for the word inception, but uh, that's pretty close. I think I'd give you a good solid A on that attempt. What, does anybody want to... It, it, any point learned what that meant? A knew it, septus. Okay. It means this. He has looked with favor on our beginning. I wonder what they meant back in 1787 when they designed the Great Seal of the United States. What were they talking about? Our founding fathers, yes, sir, right here, second row from the back. They, they felt that God, on, in so many ways, had looked with favor on our beginning and had been on our side. Thank you very much for that. And then at the bottom of the pyramid, who wants to try that one? Third and final Latin phrase. Okay, back here in the middle, yes. Seclorum, novus ordo seclorum. And you know what? Who wants to try that? Our Latin scholars, yes. All right. He says it means the new world order, correct, or the new order of the age. Now, now let's think about this. Thank you, thank you for going along with the gag, and you put your dollar bills back in your billfold, or you can give them to Mr. Guyton, whichever you'd like, to, to, to help produce our next uh, program. Um, Novus Ordo Seclorum. The new world order. You know how many people we had in, in the whole United States of America at that time? Less than three million. You know where they were? They were right along the eastern seaboard. You know, Boston, down to New York City, and on down through the middle Atlantic, and down through the Carolinas. Just a few million people out of all the people on the face of the earth clinging to the eastern seaboard of North America. And they had won their independence from Great Britain, thank God. And they had come back and signed a constitution which would stand today, 225 years later plus. And they, they had enough audacity to say, we're the new order of the age. You know, you know how many representative democracies there were on the face of the earth at that time? There was one and one only, and that was this new little country, the United States of America. But they had enough vision and enough foresight to say, we're going to be the new world order. And you know what? They were right. They were right. A um, few more dates, and then have you all decided on some... 
tenors and basses and what y'all y'all about to make a decision here. A few more dates here. Um, let me try this one. 1863. 1863. All right. Well, okay. Uh, that good. That's good. Gettysburg is an excellent answer. Let's come a little closer to home. Okay. Well, okay. A lot, a lot of things uh, in connection with the Civil War, Emancipation Proclamation. Let's see if, and of course that did affect Mississippi, but something in Mississippi that happened in 1863. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. The Siege of Vicksburg. Now, I was, uh, I was down there. Now, if that was 150 years ago, what does that make this year? It makes it the sesquicentennial, sesquicentennial of the siege and battle of Vicksburg. And I was there when you were here Monday. I was down there making a little speech in Vicksburg. And, and I made this point. Um, you know, we, we remember on Memorial Day. And by the way, what exactly is, what do we, what do we celebrate and memorialize on Memorial Day? What's the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day? Who can stand and answer that question? All right, one of you two that hasn't spoken up. Okay, come on. What's the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day? We memorialize, but it's close. That's right. That's right, good. Veterans Day, we honor all veterans. We even honor people like me. You know, just flew a desk, but I'm a veteran. But but Memorial Day, we memorialize those who died. And there are a lot of mainly young men, mainly privates and corporals from the north and from the south who came to Vicksburg and gave their lives. They might have given their lives in in uh in at, at Gettysburg. They might have uh, they might have, uh, it, it might have been at Shiloh. But we remember the fallen. And we remember the fallen from all of our wars. Everyone. Uh, and now, of course, we've got men and women fighting. And we remember those who, who've died. But I'll say that as I, as I was there at Vicksburg Monday, I was thankful for the ones that served. My my great great grandfather served in the Confederate Army. We had some people. We had people from twelve or fifteen states in Mississippi on Memorial Day, and of course, we had people whose ancestors had fought on the Union side. I'm proud of my great great grandfather. They were proud of their ancestors. But the thing to remember about this sesquicentennial year of Gettysburg and Vicksburg is. Not only their sacrifice and their bravery, but also the fact that they got over it. You know, Abraham Lincoln said in his second address, he, he could see that the war was going to be won by the Union forces. And he said, with malice toward none, with charity for all, let's bind up our wounds and make one nation. And later on in April of that year, General Nathan Bedford Forrest, a Confederate general, saying farewell to his troops, he said, you know, we thought we could form our own confederacy. We have failed in that. But then he told his troops this, and it's very important. He said, you've made good soldiers. You can make good citizens. Now go home and make good citizens. And... You know, I'm, I'm thankful that Abraham Lincoln said what he did. You know, not, not everybody agreed with him. They didn't, not, some people wanted to have a little malice because uh, they felt pretty aggrieved by this four-year-long war. Not everybody wanted to agree with Nathan Bedford Forrest that we should go home and get, put this past us and be good American citizens. Um, but most people did. And what we have as a result of that is 
the most prosperous and the freest 150 years that any people has ever experienced on the face of the earth. Now, um, okay. Now, I want some people to help us listen to the national anthem. Does, do we have any nominees who, who are willing to get up here and be part of, say, let's say eight people max that could sing the national anthem? Okay, you, are you that good? Okay. All right. Okay. Talk amongst yourselves. All right. Okay, now you counselors kind of um, ride her. Okay, can you sing? Can you sing? Okay. All right. Okay, this is good. This is good. This is good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we've, we have the Boy State chorus behind us now. Um, okay. Um, two, more, two more dates. 1815, 1815. Yes, sir. Yes, what, what happened in 1815? That's exactly right, the Battle of New Orleans. Good answer. <laughs> Colonel, Colonel Andrew Jackson took a bunch of troops, and you know what? He took them down the Natchez Trace. The song says down the Mississippi took them down the Natchez Trace through the heart of Mississippi and fought the final battle of the War of 1812, which is the Battle of New Orleans early, early in 1815. As the War of 1812, um, something happened exactly 200 years ago during the War of 1812. It was the Battle of... Um, Fort McHenry in Baltimore Harbor. And who was, oh, you got your hand up? Yes. Tell us about it. That's exactly right. The national anthem was written by whom? By Francis Scott Key. Okay, now we all remember what happened. He was, he was held on a British ship and the battle of Fort McHenry waged, and he was asking himself, is that American flag going to be there tomorrow morning? That's what he's asking. And he wrote a song about it, and then he wrote the end of it the next morning, and that's what our group is going to sing today. Now, do we? let's all get on one side here. So, it's good. Now, do we have parts? Are we just going to just belt... Oh, you're going to wing it? Okay. You're going to harmonize, harmonize as they go. Okay. Now, I always was told that during the national anthem, one stands reverently and salutes by putting one's hand over his heart. So let's do that. And let's face the flag. And let's listen to the boy state of 2013 chorus, Sing the Star Spangled Banner.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, they say, um, the, they say the, uh, the Star Spangled Banner is one of the hardest uh, songs to sing, but uh, I'm all for keeping that as our national anthem, and I want to tell you why. Uh, as I say, Francis Scott Key wondered something that night as the battle was raging. And he asked a question, and the question was, will I be able to see by the dawn's early light that flag that I was hailing at the twilight? Some fancy uh, 18th century words, but I'll say, can you see by the dawn's early night, by the dawn's early light? And so he begins that verse of the Star Spangled Banner with a question. The special thing to me is that he ends that verse with a question. And so when we sing the national anthem, when we just sang that national anthem, what we ended with was a sentence followed by a question mark. And it was this. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Does it still wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave? And, of course, we know the answer was we won the battle. We got to keep our little country. And this great experiment would go on in democracy and freedom. The, the, the question I would leave with you, the question I would leave with you gentlemen is, will you, as good citizens, make the decisions that have been made through every generation since 1812 to keep us the greatest and freest democracy on the face of the earth. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate it.